Hey everyone, this is Matt with another overdue simplistic take. So I felt like this was very necessary to do this take. It's kind of the talk of the town at this point and kind of wearing pink a little bit. My hair's a little crazy today as well too. So I felt it appropriate and necessary and timely of course to uh, talk about the new film in the theater starring Walking Phoenix entitled Joker. So, Joker, this movie is the talk of everywhere now. The internet, Twitter sphere, Instagram sphere, got all sorts of standing ovations at the uh, Venice Film Festival or, you know, where, wherever the other, Ven wherever other, you know, cans, ever, everywhere else it's been kind of premiering lately and now it's finally in the theaters now. So, it is upon us, Joker's available. One small thing. Yeah. When you bring me out, can you introduce me as Joker? It is. It's the quote unquote origin story of the Joker, the infamous Batman villain that everybody knows so much. Um, very much in the vein of the storytelling of the killing joke, the Alan Moore, the seminal Alan Moore um, graphic novel detailing his per perception of what uh, the clown Prince of Crime, how he became the clown Prince of Crime. Um, the whole idea is basically one bad day or one bad week can turn you into your worst fear, your worst enemy, things like that. So, um, a lot of things in my mind kind of going about this film. Actually got into a pretty big dialogue with, with my wife, Nicole, about this, uh, just a few minutes ago. And it kind of stimulated my, my mind a little bit where, um, I'll start off first with walking Phoenix. He is very, very good. Very, scary, menacing, sympathetic, sad. He's everything you would kind of want in a person who has a very serious mental defect, which I'm hoping at the end of the day, this what this kind of film is talking about a little bit, which, you know, it should be. Um, the unfortunate part about this is that this movie had to be made in, under the guise of, of it being, I don't want to say it's a Batman film, but in a lot of ways it happens in the Batman universe. I mean, um, I'll, I'll just be out there right front and center. I'm going to spoil stuff right now. I mean, this is essentially the origin of how Bruce Wayne becomes Batman come the end of this film. You get the, you know, spoiler again. I want to say spoiler, spoilers. You basically see Thomas Wayne and Martha Wayne get murdered. Uh, in front of Bruce Wayne after they're watching Gazora the Gay Blade um, at the at the theater. So, and you have the famous, you know, when you get the pearl clutching scene where her pearls get ripped off and, you know, it follows kind of sort of in a way that might be stylistically similar to a Batman 89 or something like that, but you see how Batman becomes Batman or how Bruce Wayne becomes Batman or why he wants to fight crime at the end of the day. Uh, and it has something to do with with the, the Joker or Arthur Fleck that's what he's being called in this in this film as well and it's it just an interesting take I mean it, it seems cheesy if I'm thinking about it at the end of the day like why couldn't you make this film just about a guy who has a mental breakdown in a lot of ways very similar to Taxi Driver which a lot of people are already comparing this to Taxi Driver first of all and yeah, it's the most similar thing to that. But at uh, a lot of people o always hail Travis Bickle as kind of an anti-hero or hero at the end because he does the right he does the right thing come the end of the film. But during the course of the film, he's a xenophobic, you know, you know, homophobic, racist Vietnam vet <laughs> in 1970s New York. And uh, a lot of this film feels very similar to a 1970s New York, even though it might be a 1970s Gotham or something like that you know so but the difference between Travis Bickle and Arthur Fleck in this film is that there's you feel horrible you feel bad for Joaquin Phoenix's Joker character Arthur, Arthur Fleck because he's a guy you pretty much he, he gets the shit end of the stick a lot of times in this film and it comes down to that basic idea of what's the difference between somebody having a bad day and another person having a bad day which is the central idea of the killing joke in a lot of ways where, hey, hey, uh, Bruce Wayne and spoilers for the killing joke and everything. Um, 
hey, Bruce Wayne, what's the difference between you having your bad day versus the bad day I had? Or the perception of a bad day, because we really don't know what the Joker's origin is, or who he is, or you know, you can read Scott Snyder, Scott Snyder's run of Batman and the New Fifty Two DC, or Alan Moore's take, or Grant Morrison's take, or you know, anybody else's take who's who's written about Batman over the course of eighty some some odd years, or even the Joker for that matter too. So, again, Walking Phoenix is just sad, and he's. You know, and this is a great performance. I mean, if you break it down to a performance base, this is, is he's scary, he's sympathetic. There's so many things going on in it, but it's also it's a very unreliable film as well too, because you're dealing with a guy who's having a who has mental problems, but is also having a mental breakdown at the same time. So you don't really know what's real, what's not real. You don't even know at come the end of this film. Spoilers again, if this film or his take of what's going on really happened or didn't happen. You don't know if there's actually a Thomas Wayne or Bruce Wayne involved in this or whether he's, he's he had lost his mind because he there are allusions in the beginning where he's in a mental institution is you know taken out and then is seeing a shrink with medicine and everything else. So um, it's an interesting character study in how we don't take care of people who really actually need help or, you know, in a lot of ways. I mean, we don't give a fuck about poor people or mentally ill people or anything like that. I mean, there's no recourse to us caring about these people until they actually do something very, truly horrible, which Arthur Fleck does do very horrible things in this film. But at the same time, do you sympathize with him? Do you feel bad? Do you find his actions you know, needful? Do you find his actions morally reprehensible? Or do you find them like, okay, I I see why he would react in this way because of what's happened to him over the course of his life and during the course of when he actually acts violently. So there's a lot of interesting things going on in this film. Um, it's you know, it's it's a character, it's a psychological character study that happens to be kind of pseudo flimsily wrapped into a universe of comic books, which that I, I want I, I don't want to say that's the only reason why this film got made. But for a lot of reasons, I'm sure it got made because it was like, oh, well, we're going to do a film about mental illness, but happen to do it about the Joker and, um, you know, wrap it in a, in a Batman bow. Um, I always find it curious and more interesting in Heath Ledger's performance as a Joker is like you don't know why what happened he's an agent of chaos uh Joaquin Phoenix is a guy who has a mental breakdown in a lot of ways it's very similar to how Rob Zombie retrofitted and did his own thing on uh, Michael Myers in the Halloween films where you gave the Joker a reason or you gave Michael Myers a reason of why he is a serial killer he came from a bad home and he tortured animals and he did this and did that. So you kind of took away the mystique of the Joker from a comic book perspective because you still don't really know why um, he became the Joker outside of probably Alan Moore's take in The Killing Joke again. So um, it's, it's, it's a film that will divide everybody, of course. I think it will be universally lauded by the performance of Joaquin Phoenix showing us something that we always knew he could do, but he did it this time, and it's pretty startling, pretty scary. It's shocking at times, and it's sad and sympathetic and infuriating at the same time. There's a lot of different layers to this movie and this character and everything else. So that's the long and short of the uh, the Joker. I think Todd Phillips did a really great job of creating this film and doing something now of course we're all talking about right now whether we like it or not so the joker would i recommend it it's definitely something to check out so you can have an opinion and talk about it a little bit but i understand why people are either upset or don't find this movie needful or anything else i mean it's a, it's a violent film it's a, it's a it's a it's a triggering film uh if you're easily triggered you probably will be triggered or upset by things that are happening in the film. Um, so 
that's kind of what I have to say. Um, so that's it. That's Matt's simplistic take. Uh, not so simplistic take this time based on the uh, on the subject matter of this film. But um, the Joker is definitely the first movie I would almost say during the course of the entire year that has garnered the reactions that it's gotten so far. And it's definitely it's, de- it's definitely worth the, the discourse, you know, whether you, you like it or not. So that's it. Simplistic take from Matt. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to... Um, you know, the YouTube channel here to our podcast, listen monthly, uh, it's Halloween, uh, month, this is a uh, month as well too. So we're doing some, uh, really simple reviews on the websites. We're doing some alphabetic, alphabetic horror, I'm calling it on the website as well. So check that stuff out and, uh, we'll be back next month. I'm sure for another edition of simplistic takes and, and hopefully the next time will be a lot more simplistic than this one is. So, See you guys later.